This is Optimal Living Daily Relationships, Episode 105, Ask Steve, Parenting, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Welcome, Relationship Optimizers. I'm Joss Marie, your host and personal narrator, right here on the Relationships Edition of Optimal Living Daily. This is your one-stop podcast for all things relationships where I narrate blog posts about dating, breakups, parenting, marriage, and much more every Monday through Friday for free. And you can guarantee it's always with permission from the authors. Also, a big thanks to Opinion Outpost for sponsoring this episode. Market research is a big business, and companies need input from people like you. Share your opinion and get rewarded with gift cards, cash, and more. Sign up for free at opinionoutpost.com slash daily. That's opinionoutpost.com slash daily. And with that, let's hear today's parenting post by Steve Pavlina as we start optimizing your life. Ask Steve Parenting by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com Another area of my life that's challenging me is parenting. Again, I see this as a question of coming up with the right paradigm that fits the realities of my situation as well as my personal values. Erin and I have two kids, a six-year-old daughter, Emily, and a son who will turn three next month, Kyle. Our family situation is relatively uncomplicated since Erin and I have only been married to each other and both kids are our own biological offspring. No exes or stepchildren in the picture. Erin and I work from home, managing several businesses between us. We would seem to have many advantages as parents, since we enjoy abundant income and set our own hours. However, our work isn't just a job to us. It's a mission, and as such, it's not the kind of work we can easily disengage from at the end of the day. Consequently, we're challenged with figuring out how to integrate the kids into our lives and define our role as parents. Much of the time, our family seems to operate at 2 plus 2 instead of 4. While she was in kindergarten, Emily made it clear to her teachers that she intends to go her own way in life. She's very headstrong and refuses to do assignments she thinks are pointless or boring. She doesn't accept blind authority unless the reasons why she should go along are explained to her in detail and she agrees with them. If she agrees, she'll cooperate. If not, she'll ignore you and do her own thing. She's virtually immune to discipline, regardless of who and how it's administered. She'll accept her punishment and then go right on doing what got her in trouble in the first place, as if to say, go ahead and punish me if you must but I know I'm right and I'm going to listen to my inner voice no matter what. The most common note we'd get from her teacher would be not following directions. One time, the principal of the school admitted to us that they didn't know how to handle Emily because Emily kept outsmarting them. She didn't react the way other kids did because the offer of mundane activities was no reward and the threat of punishment was no deterrent for her. I can't hold anything against Emily for being this way, though. My life could easily earn a not-following-directions note, too. Actually, when I see Emily breaking systems by doing her own thing, my true reaction is, that's my girl. She's a systems buster, just like her dad, an endless source of frustration to the status quo. Our son Kyle isn't far behind. While his personality is different than Emily's, He's very intelligent for his age. We had him professionally evaluated, and he's about a year ahead cognitively. He's still in that terrible twos phase, so I'm curious to see what he's like when he's older. I think both of our kids have tremendous potential, and I don't want to squash these qualities by subjecting them to a standard American education. My wife went to public school, and I went to religious private school, but neither of those options appeals to me especially since the Las Vegas educational system is short on qualified teachers. Homeschooling wouldn't be a viable option either, since neither Aaron nor I are willing to sacrifice enough of our work time to manage it. 
The best option might be some kind of private tutoring, similar to homeschooling, except that Aaron and I wouldn't be doing it ourselves. We can certainly afford that. But what would be the curriculum? Do we give the kids a standard education, filling their heads with useless trivia? No, that's out. Or do we give them a practical education, like showing them how to set up their own internet businesses and generate income from them, so they'll never need to get a regular job to support themselves? There are lots of possibilities for where we could take this. I don't want to push my own values on my kids either. My parents did that to me with Catholicism, and of course, it didn't work. By age 17, I'd had enough brainwashing and opted to find my own way, immune to the backlash of counterpressure. I want to expose my kids to the larger spectrum of options and let them find their own path, even if it's vastly different than mine. For example, we explained to Emily why we're vegan, and it seemed to resonate with her even more than I expected. If she sees her grandparents eating meat, she'll sometimes yell at them. Don't eat animals because it makes the animals say, ow. But if Emily someday changed her mind and wanted to try eating animals, I'm fine with that. Although, I know many vegans wouldn't be. I want her to learn to make her own conscious choices, just as I encourage everyone else to do. I always thought of parenting as the act of raising children, but sometimes I wonder who's raising whom. I often think my kids are teaching me patience and forgiveness. A couple days ago, I asked Emily, What are you here to teach me, Muffin? Muffin is my pet name for her. She looked up, smiled at me, and said, Playing. My challenge is to define my role as a father. On the one hand, I have this larger mission, and on the other hand, I have two children to raise, and to be raised by them. I often feel like I'm sacrificing one for the other, falling into win-lose or lose-win. When I'm writing, I'm neglecting my role as a father, and when I'm playing with the kids, I'm neglecting my mission. Is there a third alternative? I think the ideal solution would involve finding a way to integrate my role as a father with my mission, but I don't yet see how that would work. Is there an and solution instead of just an either or? You just listened to the post titled Ask Steve Parenting by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Thank you to Steve for letting us feature his content so frequently here on the Relationships Edition of Optimal Living Daily. It's always a pleasure. And another thanks to Opinion Outpost for sponsoring the show today. Market research is a $50 billion a year industry. Companies need input from people like you before they launch new products and services. That's where Opinion Outpost comes in. Opinion Outpost is run by SSI, one of the most trusted names in consumer research. Opinion Outpost connects companies with people like you through online surveys that give you the chance to tell companies how you think and feel about virtually everything, from new products and advertising to social issues and more. And since they know your time is valuable, Opinion Outpost rewards you for taking surveys. You can earn cash, iTunes and Amazon gift cards, and more. Surveys are accessible 24-7, so you can participate whenever you'd like. Your personal information remains private and secure, and it's free to sign up, no credit card required. And you can earn actual money just by sharing your opinion. Sign up today at OpinionOutpost.com daily to make your voice heard and start earning rewards. That's OpinionOutpost.com daily. And that's 105 episodes down. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and I'll see you again on Monday with a post from Leo Babauta, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. 
You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.